Hi Paul, Sister J, hope you're okay today. We'll try and get through as much as I can. Uh, I've still got about three quarters of an hour left. So I hope everybody's okay. <coughs> and uh, we're looking at um, the following Christ course, part two. And we're looking at the person of Christ. So let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you the prayers and we give you the glory and the honor. And Father, we ask that you be in this and uh, Father we pray for your presence and help in Jesus name Amen so our passage <coughs> in this study is Luke chapter 4 verse 14 to 30 uh, 14 to 30 Luke chapter 4 verse 14 to 30 Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside he taught in the synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went in the synagogue as was his custom and he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And rolling it he found the place where it is written The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour then he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened to him and he began by saying to them today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips isn't this son this Joseph's son they asked and Jesus said to them surely you will quote this proverb to me physician heal yourself do you hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum I tell you the truth he continued no prophet is accepted in his own town I assure you that there were many widows in Israel's in Elijah's time and when the sky was shut up shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land yet Elijah was not sent to any of them but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon and there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elijah the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They, get up, drove him, they got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him down the cliff, but he walked right through the crowd, and he went on his way. Um... The question that I'd like to ask is, who do you think Jesus is? And what does this passage teach us about Jesus? Okay. Um, now, it says that Jesus is, is God in the flesh, in the Word of God. Um, if, you, if we turn to John, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning so the word is God it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so the word is God okay he was in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not misunderstood it. Then verse 14, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So there is quite clear that when we see Jesus Christ, we're seeing God in the flesh. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses, there's a lot of cults, even in evangelicalism. I, I met a church, a big kind of Pentecostal church, kind of church charismatic -y, and it was quite clear that someone from this church they were teaching that Jesus was different from the Father that he was not God Jesus wasn't God uh, in the flesh and you know that's heresy that's wrong um, so you, you need to understand if you're a new believer maybe you've come out of the Jehovah's Witness the Mormons Islam whatever or wherever you come from you need to understand when you're seeing Jesus you're seeing God in the flesh now the Trinity and the rest of it 
uh, is not easy to understand but basically the Bible teaches that there's one God but there are three persons in the Godhead the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit it's kind of like a three leaf clover all right you got a three leaves of the plant but they're one okay it's kind of like um, water you can have steam you can have ice um, and you can have water you can have just water that you drink that's three forms of water yet they're one okay um, but what does this passage say about Jesus well it says the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor why is it that we believe in Jesus Christ uh, it, we believe in Jesus Christ because one of the reasons is he fulfills all the Old Testament prophecies but that's really important because for example the prophet Muhammad people say and Muslims say that in the Old Testament it says in the book of Moses that Jesus uh, that there would be a prophet like Moses come and that passage is relating to Muhammad but that's completely wrong it's, it's wicked because the Old Testament all the prophecies, prophecies in there concerning are, are mainly concerning the Messiah not all some of them are about nations and things like that and judgment but the principal prophecies are concerned about the Messiah Jesus Christ and so when we want to know who the right person is to believe in we ask ourselves does that person fulfill all the prophecies of the Old Testament and Jesus fulfills all those prophecies he, he fulfills all the types okay and here we have an example where the Messiah was to come to be anointed by the Holy Spirit to go to the poor to bring freedom to bring light to help the oppressed and to bring salvation that's what the Messiah was to do and Jesus fulfilled that perfectly now notice that the Jewish people questioned Jesus' authority okay and in Islam they'll say we believe the same Jesus but ultimately they they will question the Jesus of the Bible they don't mind the Jesus of their own opinion but the Jesus of the Bible they will question his authority and the Jews here question Jesus' authority and Mormonism and the Jehovah's Witnesses the Mormons uh, have got whole sorts of things going on in their system and you've got to be aware of this that they don't tell you you know uh, they they have teaching that you when you become a Mormon you can become a God which is blasphemy because there's only one God um, they have um, they put a lot of pressure on Mormon women to be perfect there's a lot of Mormon women over the years that have gone in mental hospitals because of the pressure that Mormon women have to be perfect and they can only get to be in a celestial planet with the Mormon uh, God husband if the God husband says that the Mormon wife is fit to do so and so Mormon women have, a lot of them uh, many of them have gone into mental hospitals because they can't live up to this perfection that's been put on them you know Mormonism doesn't have any evidence for its book the, the book of Mormon there's no evidence for that because uh, it talks about a land in, in the Americas where there were these tribes that mentioned in the Book of Mormon and no one can find any archaeological evidence but the Mormonism will question the biblical Christ the Jehovah's Witness will question the biblical Christ the Jehovah's Witness will come to you and say we're biblical but actually their system was developed by Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford and these were charlatans these were people who didn't know Greek didn't know Hebrew uh, were, were caught lying in court uh, give false prophecies you know the early Jehovah's Witness they prophesied that you know Armageddon would be in 1914 it never came uh, things like that so 
They, but they will say they believe in Jesus, but they don't. They question the biblical Jesus. Okay? But the biblical Jesus is, is rooted in the Old Testament. All the Old Testament points to Christ. The, the sacrifices, the, the, um, when they had the year of atonement in the Old Testament, when the goats or animals were sacrificed for the, for the, for the, for, as a sin offering, you know, the sacrifices were appointing to the once and for all sacrifice, Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Okay? So, whenever anybody comes to you and says, and they're a cult, and we say that we believe the same Jesus, you've got to say, well, do they believe the same Jesus as me in the Bible? Or if the cult says to you, my prophet is the authoritative prophet, well, did are they did they get that from the Bible? Is it is it fulfilled in the Word of God? And the answer is no, because Jesus is the final, full revelation, and He fulfills all the Old Testament. And then He says in verse twenty-four, "I tell you the truth," He continued, "No prophet is accepted in his own town. I assure you that there were many wi widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was severe famine throughout the land." Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And what that's saying is, look, you know, the Lord came for the weak. He came for the rejected. He came for the sinner. All right, Naaman, it says. Um, and they were many Israel with leprosy in the time of Elijah, the prophet. Yet none of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. In other words, God, Christ came for his people he died for his people he died for the whole world but he he's come to save sinners okay he's come for the lost and um, that's who Christ is he he is the fulfillment of the Old Testament He's the Messiah he's God in the flesh he fulfills all the Old Testament prophecies people reject him and question his authority and he comes to save that which is lost. He comes for his people. And that's the true Messiah. And anybody comes with you with a false Messiah or a false prophet, you're to reject it. Okay? I hope that's a blessing. And we'll go to the next one. Okay. Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for your love. Lord, I just pray you'd help us to be vigilant and not to accept what the Jehovah's Witness or Mormons say but reject it because it's not of you Lord we pray that we would reject Islam because Islam is not of you but we pray that we would accept and believe the word of God and the Bible and what the Bible says about you Lord Jesus Christ that you are the one who was anointed you are the one who came to the poor you are the one that brought salvation to your people and Father God, we confess every sin today and every weakness. And if I pray, Father God, that whatever shared today would be a blessing. I pray those who are weak in the faith about you, Lord, that they're doubting whether you are the Son of God, whether you are the real Christ. I pray if they're doubting this, that they would be confirmed and strengthened and know that you are their Saviour, you are their Lord, and they can put their complete trust in you. So, Father, we ask this in your name and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll put some links to various cults so you can be armed and well informed. If you are struggling, um, coming out of a cult like the Witnesses and the Mormons or out of a, a religion like Islam, and you need help, just get in contact and I'll try and help you. Okay. But be strong in the faith get good foundations. I'm going to put some links on who Christ is for you to read and to listen to and also about cults so that you, you can be informed. I hope that's a blessing. Take care and God bless.